Hey couples, in today's video, we're going to talk about unmet expectations in your marriage. And did you know that if you've ever felt annoyance or disappointment or anger with your spouse, it may be because of unmet expectations in your marriage? Let me give you an example from our relationship. When our kids were younger or old enough to interact more like in the toddler, early elementary years, when Brian would come home from work, he would greet the kids, roll around on the floor and just really kind of play with the kids right away. And I just got really annoyed by that and angry at him for that, thinking, how dare you just ignore me while I'm in the kitchen cooking dinner and then just paying attention to the kids. And what I realized is that internal anger that I had, it was an unmet expectation that I had never voiced to Brian. I had never said, hey, I would really love it when you come home. This is what my dad used to do when I was growing up, would be to greet my mom first and then talk and hang out with the kids. And so we just had to realize together as a couple, I had to say, hey, this is clearly an unmet expectation that I had and I better let you know so we don't have unnecessary conflict. So in this video, we're gonna give you some practical insights if your unmet expectations are causing conflict. And we wanna start with this. It's important to understand that we all have expectations and that they come from our childhood, our culture, and even our internal dialogue. So make a list with your spouse and talk about what you expect in the following areas. Let's start with the role of a husband and the role of a wife. Yeah, so you may not even realize that when you came into marriage, you came with certain expectations that were unspoken, maybe even to you, of things that you saw modeled growing up. Let's say your dad was a super handy guy that when something would break, your dad would figure it out and fix it. But maybe you married a man who is not a Mr. Fix-It, who doesn't want to tackle home improvement projects. He came from a family where when something broke, you called in the expert to fix it, right? So you could see how that expectation then, if, if your husband doesn't meet something that you think he should be as a husband, that that would cause conflict in the marriage. But the reality is that doesn't make your husband less of a man or not a good husband. It just means that he's different than what you expected. Same thing with the wife. Maybe your husband's looking at you and complaining that you're not ironing his shirts, let's say. And maybe you're saying, listen, I came from a single parent home or from a mom who worked outside of the home. We either took things to the dry cleaners or we all did our own laundry. But so you can see how a husband then might look at a wife with criticism or thinking you're not meeting certain expectations, but they were unspoken. You didn't even realize, A, that you may have had that expectation, but you certainly had never expressed it to your spouse. Or what about your expectations around how to discipline kids or how to budget. These are two areas that can cause a lot of conflict in a marriage. Now, if you have kids, you know that parenting's stressful enough, but now imagine that you layer on top of that maybe some expectations that you have of your spouse or how you think parenting should be looking in the home and your spouse is maybe not doing their part. How frustrating that would be, how that would start to create conflict because it's creating a reaction in you that your spouse isn't following through or doing something and then your spouse is like, I'm not sure what to do with that. Why are you getting so angry with me? Same thing with budgeting, you know, money is one of the biggest predictors of divorce. So if you have different expectations or you have an expectation of how money should be spent or how money should be saved and you don't voice that or express that, then again, that's gonna cause conflict because you have an expectation that your spouse is not meeting, yet they don't know it. And this last one on our list might be the most difficult to talk about, but it's important for couples to have the conversation. You need to talk about your expectations around the frequency of sex. And again, this is gonna be important because your expectations of this might change as you get older, as you, you know, before you have kids, once you have young kids, once you have kids out of the house, that you might be reacting to your spouse about what you expect about the, how often sex should be happening in a relationship. And when it's not, that's gonna create conflict because you're gonna be hurt that your spouse isn't doing what you want them to be doing. Now this first step is about understanding your own expectations. Ask yourself these questions. And then secondly, you have to remember that your spouse isn't a mind reader, so you have to set them up for success by sharing those expectations with your spouse. And we have a few ground rules to help you to do that. This is really an important step when you wanna avoid unnecessary conflict with your spouse. It's getting to this place where you start to express 
what those expectations are internally that have caused you to have anger or hurt towards your spouse. Now you're expressing them. So the first step that you need to take is to be honest. Just be honest with your spouse to say, you know what? I got angry with you today because the dishwasher broke and I knew you weren't gonna be able to fix it. And it turns out, I guess that's coming from an unmet expectation because I had a dad who would come and fix the dishwasher. Now I know that that's not what you do. And so now we gotta wait to call the repairman. But I'm just gonna be honest, like that was a, an expectation that I had and it wasn't a fair expectation or let's find a compromise in that particular situation of how we handle that. But I was kind of punishing you for not being the kind of dad or husband that my dad was. It's just being honest with each other. It's not to hurt each other. It's not to make the other person feel bad that they don't measure up to that. It's just being honest like, hey, this this is an expectation that I have, which then leads to the second ground rule, which is not to judge, right? The point of expectations is your expectations may not always be right, but it's good to just acknowledge them and to be able to say to your spouse, like, hey, here's, here's an expectation that I have. Like, for example, let's say Valentine's Day is coming up and your expectation is I want flowers and a really a personal card. And your husband comes home and says, oh, we could order out and I bought this card from Hallmark and just signed my name on it. Now he's still being kind and caring, but it didn't meet the expectation that you had for what a true Valentine's Day would be. So rather than punishing him, you need to say that like, hey honey, just so you know, this is what I'd really love for Valentine's Day, right? So we're not being judgmental. We're not making our spouse feel bad for when they don't meet our expectation, but we're expressing it to say, to set them up for success, right? Is to say, hey, just so you know, here's an expectation that I have. So your spouse has a chance to meet it. And then the last ground rule is that we just listen actively to one another, that we're not defensive, that we just really wanna understand how can I better love you? What are some of those expectations you have for me as a husband or a, as a wife? And how do we work together to meet some of those expectations? And let's, let's be committed to one another that when we have a feeling of angst or frustration and we identify it as an unmet expectation that we commit to one another, that we're gonna share it with each other and the other one will be receptive to that and then we can talk about it. And do you see how that then helps to resolve or just avoid unnecessary fights over unmet expectations? Now couples, it's important to understand as you're going through this exercise that you are not perfect and neither is your spouse. So show grace as you grow into soulmates in the area of unmet expectations. Couples, this is really important. And I like this phrase about growing into soulmates. This comes from a book from Tim Mulehoff called Marriage Forecasting, where I think a lot of us, our expectation of marriage is that we we think that our spouse, like if, if we're really soulmates, then you should understand every need that I have. But the reality is that we kind of grow into becoming soulmates as we share our heart, as we share our expectations with our spouse, because they can't read our minds. They didn't grow up in the same home we grew up in. And so we really set each other up for success and we grow together as soulmates as we share our heart, as we share our expectations. So couples identify maybe some of those things that you're having arguments over and recognize that it's probably unmet expectations. So take the time to share those, to be honest with one another and grow in your ability to meet your spouse's expectations every day. Now, couples, if you've got questions, make sure to leave them in the comments below. And if you want more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to this channel on YouTube. And hey, help us spread the word about these videos by hitting that like button.